We recently welcomed our first baby and something that I'm anticipating now that I'm postpartum is that post-pregnancy hair loss, also known as telogen effluvium. This is something that a ton of women experience in their lifetime. And today we're gonna talk about it. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis and I'm a board certified dermatologist. I'm here to help you understand your skin and hair and find products that work for you. If you like what you see, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. This video includes a partnership with iRestore and in just a bit, I'm gonna show you how I use this device in my postpartum hair care routine. I wanted to make this video because postpartum hair loss can be really alarming and also incredibly frustrating. And having just brought a baby into this world, I can tell you it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever experienced. It's incredible incredibly enriching, but it's also super stressful. And then to see your hair fall out three months after you have your baby can just add to that stress. So for me, when I have a little more information on something, it helps ease my mind. And that's what this video is here to do. Before we delve specifically into postpartum hair loss or a form of telogen effluvium, I just really quickly wanted to touch on hair biology and hair physiology. We all have about 100,000 hairs on our head, but not all of our hairs are doing the same thing at the same time. The vast majority of our hairs are in something called the antigen phase, also known as the growth phase. 85 to 90% of our hair is doing this at one time. And those are the hairs that are actively growing or getting longer. In most people, the antigen phase is two to six years, but in some people it can be longer. Those are the people that can grow their hair really, really long. Then the hair will go through a transition phase called catagen, which lasts about two to three weeks. And what it's doing is it's transitioning from a growth phase to a rest phase. And the rest phase of hair is called telogen. Most hairs are not in telogen. Only about 10 to 15% are hanging out in that rest phase. They stay there for about three months, not growing in the follicle, and then they will shed in an event called exogen. Because your hairs are constantly cycling through the antigen, catagen, telogen, and exogen phases, and at different times, it's normal to lose somewhere between 50 and 200 hairs a day. When people talk about experiencing hair loss, also known as alopecia, they're talking about a phenomenon in which they are losing hair fast faster than their head is replacing it, which makes the hair appear thinner. And oftentimes people will notice increased shedding of their hair as well. All right, now that we have that out of the way, let's delve into postpartum hair loss or telogen effluvium. I do have an entire YouTube video dedicated to hair loss more generally, so you can also check that out. So telogen effluvium. This is a type of hair loss that happens when an inappropriate number of antigen hairs, hairs that are in the growth phase, prematurely transition into the telogen or into the rest phase. Remember how I said usually only 10 to 15% of hairs are in the telogen phase. When you're undergoing telogen effluvium, you can have 30% or more of your hairs transition into the telogen phase all at once, which means that when your hair sheds a few months later, when the rest phase is over, you're going to have a lot more hairs falling out at once. And this is super alarming. Now, telogen effluvium doesn't happen for no reason. It is typically triggered by an intense physical or emotional stressor like childbirth. So postpartum hair loss is essentially one version of telogen effluvium. It starts about three months after giving birth and can progress and last for several months after that. Some people will notice increased hair shedding for up to a year after their delivery. And although this hair shedding is expected and generally harmless, it's also important to know when to seek medical attention or a professional opinion. And that would be if you're having other body symptoms with your hair loss. So extreme fatigue, GI disturbances like diarrhea or constipation, an inability to tolerate cold and heat, increased sweating, heart palpitations, because these can be signs of other underlying metabolic problems that are contributing to your hair loss. Things like having a low iron level or being anemic, as well as having a thyroid issue, which are both more common postpartum. Now here's the deal. There is no cure or even significant treatment for postpartum hair loss or telogen effluvium after childbirth. It's really about time and letting your body adjust after that really stressful event. For many people, that hair shedding is going to significantly slow down over time and hair growth will return to where it was before ever getting pregnant. However, and this is really why I wanted to make this video because I don't think it's talked about enough. Having an event of telogen effluvium can prematurely reveal a different type of hair loss, another type of hair loss called female pattern hair loss. And that is a more long-standing type of hair loss that needs ongoing treatment. Sometimes I'll have patients come into my office for a hair loss consultation and they'll tell me, hey, doctor, 
Dr. Ellis, I had that normal shedding that I expected to have after I had my baby. But then afterward, my hair never really went back to where it was before I ever got pregnant. I feel like my hair continues to be thin. I'm not shedding as much, but I can see my scalp more and my ponytail isn't as thick. And that's really female pattern hair loss that's been revealed because they had an event of telogen effluvium. And it is not uncommon. So who's at risk for this happening? Essentially anyone who has a genetic predisposition to develop female pattern hair loss. So look at your family members. Does your dad have baldness? Does your mom or sibling have thin hair? We know that about 40% of women over their lifetime will have female pattern hair loss. And I really didn't want an event like telogen effluvium to trigger my female pattern hair loss or to reveal it prematurely. And because male pattern baldness runs in my family, it was something I was pretty concerned about. So I'm in my early thirties now, but I noticed before I ever even got pregnant that I was already starting to show some early signs of female pattern hair loss, principally my ponytail was not as thick and that can be an early sign. And so I knew that in my postpartum hair care journey, I wanted to do everything possible to combat female pattern hair loss because I did not want to come out of pregnancy having persistent thinning hair. So let's talk about treatment for optimizing hair growth in the postpartum period, including when you're breastfeeding. What's safe? and what works. First, I wanna discuss low-level laser therapy, also known as LLLT, because I get a ton of questions about it and people really wanna know, is this effective and is this safe for me to use? So on my Instagram a few weeks ago, you might've seen a video of me wearing this cap that was flashing red lights. And that was me participating in a low level laser therapy session to stimulate hair growth. So low level laser therapy essentially uses very specific wavelengths of light with very specific settings to stimulate new hair growth. And we think this happens through a couple of different pathways. One is we think that that light induces blood flow to the scalp, which can produce new hair growth. And also that it creates a metabolic shift within specific hair follicles to induce new growth. Essentially, the goal is to stimulate catagen and telogen hair follicles. So hair follicles that are transitioning to the rest phase or hair follicles that are already in the rest phase to then move on to the antigen or growth phase. For those with male pattern hair loss, as well as female pattern hair loss, studies have shown that low level laser therapy can induce new hair growth. And not only that, it can improve the quality quality of the hair. So not just make someone grow new hair, but have thicker, shinier hair as well. Which brings me to talk about iRestore, which is the low level laser therapy system that I personally use. So this is what the helmet looks like. And inside you can see, this is where all of the lasers and LEDs are. This one has 282 of them. And then there's this cord here that plugs into the wall. And you might say, okay, well, like why choose this one? There are plenty of other laser helmets out there on the market. Well, this one is FDA cleared, clinically proven, it's hands-free, non-invasive, and easy to use. And I think those are all really important factors when deciding what kind of helmet you're gonna use and is it going to fit into your life and lifestyle. With any hair regrowth treatment, whether it's minoxidil or PRP or low-level laser therapy, results may vary, but I really love that iRestore stands behind their product and they offer a 12-month money-back guarantee. So if you're not seeing the results that you want after a year of use, you can have your money back. And I think that's huge because for me, this feels like an investment. And if I'm going to invest in something, I want to feel like it's either going to work or if it doesn't work, I didn't waste my money. With a helmet like this, you would expect to see new hair growth within three to six months. So having 12 months to really test the product should be ample time to understand whether or not this device works for you and your type of hair loss. In terms of incorporating this therapy into my lifestyle, it's actually been so easy and I didn't actually expect that. You only need to use it every other day for 25 minutes. And I definitely spend 25 minutes every single day sitting on the couch, looking at my phone, responding to emails, watching TV, breastfeeding, etc. So now I just pop the helmet on during that time and I'm getting a treatment while I'm also being productive. Although this treatment is super convenient to use, I wouldn't waste my time incorporating technology into my life if I didn't believe that it was truly effective. I treat a lot of female pattern and male pattern hair loss in my clinic and low level laser therapy is a mainstay of treatment. And it's very appealing for a lot of people because it is non-invasive. You don't have to take oral medication. You don't have to do it every single day. So a lot of my patients have really enjoyed incorporating this into their routine. Honestly, I think the thing that makes people the most hesitant to try low-level laser therapy is the cost. But iRestore is having a sale now and I have a code, Dr. Ellis, that is going to get you a discount. So if it's something you've been thinking about and you're like, oh, I kind of wanted to try it, this might be a good time to take the plunge. The other nice thing about low-level laser therapy is that it can be used in conjunction with other hair loss treatments. So just because you're using a laser helmet, it doesn't mean you can't also have a hair transplant or use minoxidil or something like that. But let's talk about other hair regrowth 
growth treatments that you can do in the postpartum period. So one thing you can do is take oral spironolactone. And this is a treatment that a lot of people are aware of for hormonal acne, but it can also help with female pattern hair loss. And a lot of people don't know that you can take it while you're breastfeeding. The one thing you have to be careful about is that it can reduce milk supply. So it's not going to be an ideal treatment for everyone for various reasons. Another hair regrowth treatment that I get a lot of questions about is Nutrafol and specifically their postpartum supplement. I think before you incorporate any supplement into your routine, it's important to discuss it with your healthcare team, but this particular supplement has been shown to improve hair growth and decrease hair shedding. And although it's not going to work for everyone, I have had several patients tell me that they've had success with this. So if it's something that you want to try, I don't think there's much harm in trying it. I would say that if you're not getting improvement after about six months of use, then it's okay to ditch it. Another hair regrowth treatment that's considered safe in the postpartum period for the vast majority of women is platelet-rich plasma or PRP injections. I won't go into too much detail here, although I can do a whole video on PRP if you want me to, but this is essentially where we take your blood and we spin it down to remove the platelets and the plasma. And this is very rich in growth factors. And then that is injected into your scalp. So it's not going to appeal to everyone, but it can be very effective for female pattern hair loss. And then the last thing I wanted to touch on briefly is the use of topical hair serums or scalp serums that don't have minoxidil because minoxidil or Rogaine is not considered safe while pregnant or breastfeeding. And so a lot of people look to these drug-free alternatives and there are a couple that have data that show that they improve hair growth. So first is the Vegamore Grow Hair Serum. Now I haven't personally tried this particular serum, but I can't tell you how many people on Instagram have messaged me that this really worked for hair regrowth for them. They used it on their scalp. I think a couple of people told me they even used it on their eyebrows. So this might be something worth trying if you're looking for a drug-free topical to incorporate into your hair regrowth routine. The other topical is by Virtue. It's their Flourish Density Booster. This is a minoxidil-free topical that has also been shown to increase hair growth and hair density in those experiencing hair loss. This is a formula that I personally have used throughout my pregnancy and will continue to use postpartum. All right, that concludes our video. I wanted to bring awareness to the fact that not all postpartum hair loss is exclusively telogen effluvium and that you can also have female pattern hair loss and that it's treatable. So although there's not a lot to do for telogen effluvium because it's going to resolve on its own, the female pattern hair loss that might come to the forefront after an episode of telogen effluvium can be treated. And I think you should because there are a lot of women who later in their life are really bothered by their thinning hair. And the sooner that you intervene on that, the better. Did you experience hair loss in the postpartum period? Tell me about your experience in the comments. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.